from Seven Oaks Juice Motors TV. The ball. The ball. Bring it in. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and we're back for a final video on our county station wagon conversion. Now you guys have seen this, this is the fifth episode, I believe, uh, of taking this Defender 90 panel van and lifting it into a county station wagon with almost like an autobiography spec. It's gonna be super nice this one. But this final episode is a bit of a mishmash. We've got a load of uh, bits to throw in and just sort out and get, get it all looking perfect. We've got to throw the final carpet piece in Annoyingly, we, uh, we can't get a sunroof. I've been trying since the start of this uh, series to grab hold of a genuine Land Rover sunroof. And unfortunately, I think they're about to go obsolete. Uh, Land Rover say there'll be some in June, but there's some conflict of information. Um, we can still get some one, one from the US, but it's double cost. So uh, I think what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna leave that and we'll see the car again to add a sunroof in. Uh, you guys have seen me previously cut sunroofs in, so you guys aren't missing out. Anyway, let's grab some tools and get straight to it.
So guys, we've just given it a nice wash and this thing's been sitting here for quite a while. You know, we've had the roof off, we've had it all down to the paint shop, it's come back, it's just been covered in dust. So it was really nice to give it that wash. And you know what, the paint on this has come up absolutely beautiful. It's a low mileage, late TDCI, but it's actually been a fair while since I've seen paint in that order, right? It's uh, like swell free sort of thing, really, really clean. But um, because we've had everything separated, we, get, we gave it a, a real thorough wash of the roof, all the seams, all the windows, everything. Um, looking super clean and very crisp. All the doors are closing, fantastic. So now that it's washed, this is gonna be the last episode on this one, as I, got, as I said at the start of the video. And all we've gotta do now is just, we've literally just gotta finish up the vehicle. So we've got the carpet sets to go in, we've gotta put the seat, um, where the seats fold down, we're gonna bolt those in for good. We've got to put the rear seat belts in and bolt them up to the anchorages. We've got to put the headliner in. Annoyingly, we can't get hold of a genuine sunroof. Um, just can't get one. And I can't even get a panoramic one, the one that we use. So we're actually gonna rebook this vehicle. Like I said at the start of the video, um, if you guys wanna see a sunroof cut in, I'll leave a link in the description somewhere. But um, this one's gonna be going away without a roof lining for now, uh, without a sunroof. And we will come back to that. But we've also got to mount the trims for good. We've got to run some extra power because we're gonna have some twin USB chargers next to the two forward facing seats. Um, so that'd be really cool. So you're literally just gonna see it now. I'll reassemble the whole of the vehicle and it's actually done. So we'll grab some tools, get straight to it. <laughs> Fashion. Balenciaga. Balenciaga, <laughs>
So guys, it's the next morning, and what I'm doing here, I should have worn gloves. <laughs> My hands are covered in grease, but there we go. It's too late now. So we have just installed uh, a new lamp on the light bar. The previous one was full of water. Uh, we replaced it for the same like for like, and they're super bright actually, really good. Um, Matt has just been putting on the, the front mud flaps, genuine ones, and the ladder assembly. This car's coming together quickly. I'm just literally building up this short shift. We're gonna throw that in. Um, we were just actually talking about this. It looks like we've done nothing. We've done all of this work. We've had the car stripped right down. And when you open the car, it just I, looks normal. It looks exactly yeah. the same, doesn't it? The, everything looks like a, just a normal Puma 90. Yeah. Still genuine. It looks, looks very really genuine. nice. That's what yeah. this car is about. It's got a very genuine style to it, which is really, really cool. And I really appreciate that because I, I'm opening it and I'm like, what was it we did again? Yeah. Like the, the rear windows just look so perfect. All the doors close so naturally. I put all these nice shiny bolts in. We've got to give this a coat of paint. The new cross member, I, wouldn't eat, I completely forgot that we completely cut that off and welded that on. It's looking super cool. It's literally just this final push to get this car over the line. And uh, then we can show it off. So guys, we're going to be installing a quick charge port on this vehicle. Uh, we've got a little, Matt, can you demonstrate this for me? Yeah. We've literally got, this is going to go direct to our battery, and we're going to disguise this neatly on the side of the air control there. And it's got a waterproof flip cover over the top of it. But it's magnetic, which is pretty neat. So they literally clip together. And if you forget, when you drive off, um, yeah, you're not going to rip yeah. your charger out of the wall of your garage sort of thing. So that's really neat and tidy, and it's very discreet, nice and neat. This has got an A-bar on it anyway, so you won't even see it at all. But in terms of the real-life us usability of this vehicle, pop it in the garage, literally grab your, grab your quick connect, chuck it on the car, done. Mm. Charging, which is really neat and tidy. Um, yeah, yeah you really. Drive yeah, you just drive away. You don't even need to, to bother to lift it off. I mean, I probably would, but that's uh, just a really nice little neat solution. We're going to install this now and uh, get this fitted.
Okay, guys, we just had something really cool delivered. And onwards with these sort of, you know, the charging ports, all the stuff that a modern car has an everyday life. Um, I mean, we can't escape it, right? Devices, all that kind of stuff. Now, the customer for this vehicle has two young boys. Uh, hence, we're installing these two forward-facing seats because they're safer than the side-facing ones. So you get a proper seat belt, which we haven't just put in just yet here. But obviously, uh, youths <laughs> like devices. So what we've got is these two super cool fast charge USB ports. Now, I must stress fast charge. So these are 3.1 amp each socket, which is exactly uh, the same as the 240 volt. So these will charge just as fast any device as uh, plugging it in at home. Now I'm just trying to work out, in terms of usability, do we put them either on the top there surface, like that, so you can have, it'd be like a bit of a plane then, wouldn't it? Have your devices there, on your phone, or whatever it is, or do we put them there? I think, I think aesthetically, their suits better, but equally, I don't want your, your knee to, you know what a USB plug's like, plug it in, I don't want your knee to, I think my knee would interfere there. And I think if we snap off a, an iPhone connection, mm. that's yeah, not- Yeah, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. It looks the best there, but I think- Do you not want to bring it forward in front of the, well, just here, above the think? bar? Yeah, but don't forget that seat when it's back. Look at this one. Yeah, is it right, right behind it? Again, same thing. If you roll the seat back and, the, and a, one of his sons has left the USB in and it rips it off, or no, no. Yes, but there's a handle there, so no. It's driver's seat belt, so no. I actually think. Uh, are we gonna be able to put it there though? Is there nothing below it? There's nothing below it, 100%. Right. Cool, we get them put in. So guys, in terms of form and function, form over function, and actual usability, I think we are gonna have to, uh, to mount these panels up here. That seems like the most sensible option. It's, you know, let's, let's say they're down there. You know what plugging in something's like as well. If you're trying to plug that in and that's this way and you're trying to, trying to lean over and trying to get the socket in, that makes a lot of sense there to be mounted like that. I've got a lot of natural light, regardless of the conditions or the interior light, this lights up anyway and I can just plug my device straight in. Um, this has a dust cover, so if the window's open, uh, oh, that's the thing though. I mean, you wouldn't have the window open, it's raining, of course. So, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, that is our best solution. And I just can't see anywhere else that would look as OEM as that or as uh, convenient. Um, we can't mount it to the back of the cubby because uh, there's a, a slimline sub there. We can't obviously mount it to a seat, can't mount it to a bar, can't mount it to these panels down here. That would be quite nice. That would be quite nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, in the carpet. But it doesn't look as, um, that looks definitely aftermarket. Mm. Yes. Because that's a plastic trim, that's a plastic trim. Yeah, it's more stylish. That, that, I, I think that's more stylish up there, personally. Yeah. I think that, again, cable up, it wouldn't be an issue, but I think that is our best bet, 100%. Final answer, that's where we're fitting it. Sure. That'll be neat as well, that's smart, isn't it? You've got your USB at the front, you've got your quick charge port at the front, you've got two yeah. USB powers back here. That's it's going to be so good. It's going to be, just in terms of your daily using, obviously we had all these cool modifications. It's refreshing to put some real thought behind the, the modifications we're making. Obviously we can just add a bar in and do the chopping and we send it away. But in terms of thinking about how the, the client is going to be using this vehicle, mm. what it's using for, sitting here doing this, placing the position of this, I think as a... Even as an adult, to getting in here, I'd be like, that's, a, that's nice. Yeah. That's smart. And that, well worth it as well. Well worth it, yeah. Road trips and everything like yeah, that, you're going to be able to charge your devices. At full power. Yeah. If you if you even didn't have someone sitting in the back and you wanted to just charge yeah, something, you, you got USBs in the yeah, back. 100% plug your phone. And it's got one up front anyway. But, yeah. Like the that, Marco, you're the battery booster, that yeah. is USB power. Yeah. You can charge that while yeah, you're in you the can back. Charge anything. That's well, everything is, isn't it? Yeah. And you can just adapt to USB to USB C, mm. whatever it is. That's super cool. Super slick. Yeah. Really nice. This car's actually really coming together. It's just smart, isn't it? Wouldn't really be able to see what we've done. 
But I guess that's what we're here for.
So guys, it's a new day and I just can't believe how far this car has come along. From splitting it right down with the roof off, cutting those tubs out, cutting the bulkhead out, cutting the rear cross member off, welding this thing all back up, putting all the panels back, installing the carpet, the seats, the trims and making everything look as good as it does has been a real challenge. But we've completely pulled it out of the bag. It looks absolutely incredible, this car. The fit and finish, I keep saying, is 100%. I don't think that even us would even notice this thing has had a conversion unless we started poking around and having a little look. It's, it's really looking that good. Um, so super impressed with that. And the boys have been working very hard on this, so that's really cool. And I think one of my favorite features is definitely those USB charging ports on the inner winner trims. Never seen it done before, so that's really cool to know that potentially we're the first to be doing that, which is absolutely amazing. Everything's digital now. Um, so all we've got to do left now is to throw in some rear luggage hooks, which they were standard on like a station wagon. We've just got to re-secure a few trims, just double check everything's working, run the electrics and just make sure that everything's all, all good, label it all up so it can be repairable in the future and serviceable. Uh, it's literally now just a little snagging bit. So all that's left now is to get this thing finished and uh, we can then show it off.
So guys, you join us at the top of the old farm and our workshop is one of those barns over there. But what a view, this place is just absolutely stunning. So we bought the Defender up here and if we turn around, this is gonna be the thumbnail photo, I can just feel it. Have a look at this thing. Super Defender setting, it just looks absolutely insane. And we, we couldn't be happy with this one. I think this, uh, I think this might be one of my favorite ones. It's a very genuine build and coming from the main dealer background, a Land Rover main dealer background, this kind of stuff really, really is a bit of me. And uh, well, let's go for a little walk and, and uh, see what you guys think. But it's just got such a nice look about it, this one. The anniversary alloys, we haven't added those by the way. The beauty of what we've done is you can't actually see anything. So uh, it all just looks so genuine and like that someone's just bought it and this is what it is. But I'd like to think we have played a big part in making this car exactly what it is. But come have a look. Stunning, absolutely stunning. We haven't actually done anything externally visually. And all of our, apart from the side windows, all of our stuff, you can just see the AC rad through there. We've added aircon, of course. All of our beautification has been done on the inside. And my goodness, what a place this is to be. Check it out. Quickly, convenience features. Unbelievable. Check this, you can't even see it. You've got a little gate here. Put your magnetic charger on from your garage. It charges the battery. And if you forget, who cares? It pops out, it's magnet, drive away. Little things like that. Very, very neat and tidy. Very cool. Come around this side. Again, can't see anything we've done apart from the armrest, the door cards. The window's looking very fresh. Very nice indeed windows looking perfect and then just check this out this was so much work I hope you guys can appreciate this because it doesn't look like we've done a lot to get it to that level has been insane it's been so much fun doing this as well it had a full bulkhead because this was a panel van it had square tubs no seats no carpet no windows and we've added all of this and yet you wouldn't be able to tell the difference so very proud of the team and myself, if I might say so. <laughs> but it looks great. It really does. It looks absolutely sensational. And it really is as good as it looks on camera. I'm not even trying to hide anything here. Not like we usually do, but even that, we that's a new cross member that we cut and welded on, added a NAS step, added a Mantec wheel carrier. And then it was just down to the wiring. And the last guys, you saw all that nest of wiring. I think we, I think we actually counted up about 50 hours went into the wiring side of this to make this thing. And un that was understanding other people's wiring, other people's attempts, there was a random tracker in there that the customer didn't know about, so we removed that. We've run all new speaker wiring, we've run an amp into the driver's seat box, we've run an active sub, new head unit, we've done so much of this wiring. And do you know what the, the best feature is? I've probably said it earlier in the video, but these little fast charging ports. I mean, how great are these? The, uh, the, cust the client's got two young boys and when they're sitting in the back, now safely, because side-facing seats are a bit dangerous, hence the introduction of these forward-facing seats, charge all their devices, they come on with the ignition, they go off with the ignition, they charge just as fast as sitting at home. Um, the seat insulation itself, we cut out the tubs, put step tubs, put subframes underneath, put seat anchorages, interior window panels, the original seat brackets, seat caps, seats, got them retrimmed to custom. So it's tan and black to match the whole front accents. We've even got the main dealer, the little seat belt, C-clips. So when they're not in use, the seat belts can be stowed nicely. Just a real focus on quality here. And um, I, I genuinely think if this car's ever sold, I don't think anyone will ever find out we were ever here. Star Tech steering wheel up the front, looking super fresh. It just brings it down to 350 mil, or actually I think it might be 400 mil, the Star Tech, which is 14, 15 inch. So it's not handling a bus, but it's got a real nice quality feel against it. But it just says Land Rover on it. Again, to the untrained eye, 
it would just look like a normal Land Rover Defender. Sensational, very nice. Reverse camera, which it also enables with reverse. We've also added a three-way switch for the front lights and the rear lights, so that you can select, if reverse is enabled, the spot will also come on. And if you don't want it to, you can put it off. And if you just want to jump out with the engine off and put it into work mode, you can do that too. And exactly the same with the front setup. On with full beam, off, or on permanently. So for work mode, you don't need the engine running or anything like that. And of course they won't work unless the, uh, the ignition's on for the reverse and full beam mode. Overall, very, very chuffed with this one. It's the, the fit and finish, I've said it so many times, it's just so clean and crisp. If we went to a main dealer, and we've had it all apart. New rear hinges on the boot. We've had a stainless bolts where possible. I just, I'd love, I love the fact you can't see any of it that we've done. It's all underneath, hidden, but driving it is just fantastic. And using those features are very nice indeed. Great, great fun. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think we pulled it out of the bag? I know a lot of you guys are commenting, why would you bother doing this conversion? Why don't you just sell it? Go and buy another one that's already had the conversion. But um, I think if you built the memories in a car and you want to keep the vehicle, that's what's great about these, the versatility of these things. You can just bring them back to a county station, pick up whatever you want. And it's just fantastic to show that we've, uh, we've taken a basic Pano van into a high spec county station wagon and nobody can tell the difference. Guys, please do give us a comment. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, which is at Juice Motors. Please do subscribe. And we'll see you guys for the next interesting build.